see, I received a call from a parent from Coney Island telling me, New York City Councilman representing today, Coney Island, telling me, by the way, Councilman, do you know there are several buses coming to PS 188 on Neptune Avenue, and it looks like it's going to be migrant shelter inside elementary school gym. I said, Whoa. no. How is it possible? I started to call City Hall, Office of Emergency Management. I was told, don't worry, it's temporary center. It's just temporary shelter. Yeah, right. Maybe for a few weeks. Yeah, we will right. not. We are overwhelmed. It's totally unexpected. Every day people coming and coming. And then I've heard the sentence I'm hearing every day from City Hall, from Office of Emergency Management, from everybody who is talking to me about this topic. All options are on the table. All options are on the table. And then they're asking me, why did I host rally of concerned parents in Coney Island telling school gym belongs to children, not to migrants? Yeah. Yeah. The very next day after this rally in Coney Island, they brought more buses and took away these migrants to Roosevelt Hotel. The very next day. So we are, have full right and we are doing the right thing by hosting this rally tonight, right now and right here. We are not waiting till they will open 30 migrant shelters around this neighborhood. Then it will be too late. Then it will be very late. Today, Mayor said at the press conference, you will see, be ready. It will be in front of every house, in every neighborhood. All options are on the table. And then they're asking us, why are we protesting? Do I live in America? Do we have a First Amendment right to protest? And my opponent responds to every question about migrant shelters in Bay Ridge. This is international humanitarian crisis. Our compassion is limitless. He never said, oh. I'm against it, I oppose to it. He is going around. Do you know why? Because his progressive base will eat him alive if he will say anything against it. Because they love it. They want more people to come. They want more open borders policy. They want all of us to pay more taxes. He voted for 1.4 billion dollars in June for migrant services. And now we're learning it will be 12 billion dollars within three years. And more coming. Where are all of this money coming? From our taxes. And then he complains that I voted against this insanity. Of course I am against this insanity. I am immigrant, third generation immigrant. I came legally. I went through several interviews, background checks, health checks. I even gave, they asked me to give blood to check whether I have AIDS or tuberculosis. That was in 1992, by the way. And I didn't do it in New York. I didn't do it in the Bronx. I did it in American embassy in Moscow. So why we cannot do it all in Mexico, not in Brooklyn? Exactly. Why we cannot invest money in additional immigration charges, consulate services back in Mexico? Why we are inviting everybody here? And then you're right. Are you Venezuelan? Yes. Okay, he's Venezuelan. <laughs> no background checks, no vetting. Oh, it's impossible. Not going to be in Bay Ridge. You know what? Did anybody here saw this list of 3,000 sites? 3,000 sites in New York City. I asked repeatedly, show me. Show me the full list. Where are you planning to put all of these migrants? No, it's a secret information. Super secret information. You know what? I do not believe a word they're saying. One word. Because they're changing this the next second. And I learned it already from Coney Island story. So I know it can happen tomorrow morning in Bay Ridge. And next day in Fort Hamilton, next day in Tucker Heights. And you know what happened in Staten Island? You know what happened oh, in yeah, Central Park? Yeah. Oh, yeah, our schools, our parks, our senior centers, our assisted living facilities, our recreational centers are for communities to enjoy, not for migrant shelters. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Not now, not ever. Not now, not ever. Not now, not ever. Not now. By the way, we support them like busy big time. Big time. And he just sent a mailer saying, I gave too many cups 
to every precinct in southern Brooklyn, more than ever before. Is he delusional? I'm talking about Justin Brennan. We have 32 and a half thousand cops today in New York City. Less than under Bill de Blasio, who was a proven cop hater. So, and under Giuliani we had 40,000 cops, now 32 and a half. So what he's talking about, again, we pay in taxes to have a good quality of life, to have clean streets, to have safe streets. Instead of it, all of this money, all of this money are coming for migrant services and migrant shelters and more. And we cannot, even Mayor said it's unsustainable. So why to continue with this nonsense? Secure the border. Yes. There is nothing, nothing compassionate about chaos. This is not compassionate. This is chaos, disaster, absolutely destroying New York City. Exactly. Not now, not ever. 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 And please, November 7th, November 7th, please vote. It's the best way. ago when Democrats and Republicans came together at Sunset Park when Eric Adams took the recreational center next to the pool and gave it to a hundred illegal aliens. Forty socialists showed up, 500 first generation Chinese Americans showed up to say no to illegal immigration. Yes! To legal immigration and the socialists were shocked. The man who's going to take Avila's out and help us take back the city council from the socialists, those who identify as socialists, Avila. I give you Paul Rodriguez. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. So, my name is Paul Rodriguez. And as Curtis mentioned, I was the candidate for New York State Controller last year. And actually, I was a resident of this district not too long ago. Imagine in 2022, and for many years I had been represented by Justin Brannon. As bad as that was, it, compa it didn't compare to then waking up a few days later and finding out that with the redistricting, are now represented by Alexa Aviles, who, mind you, she is not a liberal. She is not a progressive. She is an avowed, dedicated socialist. She 
he is one of those people who still proudly supports defunding the police, closing all the jails. She's completely hostile to school choice, even though she herself benefited from going to another school outside of New York to get a better education. See, she is completely unsympathetic to homeowners or business owners because after all, she doesn't believe in private property. She wants to rezone everything so we can just put tenement buildings where everybody simply lives all together. Not have your own home, not be the master of your own destiny. And by the way, people like her, who now keep increasing the number in the city council, they feel that the American values that we all hold dear, of each individual having life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, is one of the most toxic qualities of our country. Now mind you, I'll tell you, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm married to a Mexican immigrant who is a, who is a citizen now. And the only reason why I even bring that up is because you'll probably hear tomorrow or later from Justin Brannan or some of or, or from Alexa that I'm a white supremacist and why is that because I actually believe that elected officials should do their job and what is their job it's to represent their constituents which is all of us and that means prioritizing your interests and your concerns but what is it that we have now? We simply have all of the city council uh, officials, the mayor, everyone in the government and the state government telling you, you have to be quiet. Be good boys and girls. Be nice, quiet, obedient sheep. That's what they want from you. Is that what we're gonna be? And you know why they want to do that? Because they want to keep hidden their complicity in the chaos that we're seeing with this migrant crisis. You know, it's very easy to advocate for open borders, to basically give the finger to the federal government when they want help enforcing immigration laws. When you further defy them by saying we are going to be a sanctuary city, it's very easy to do that. When you're thousands of miles away from the southern border, El Paso, which I actually lived in for a year, and you never really expect to have to face the consequences of that virtual signaling, because that's the difference between public policy and virtual signaling, is consequences and having a plan. And as Curtis has always said, we have the swagger man with no plan, and that includes the rest of the city council. They have no plan. So all they can do is keep you quiet, and if you deign to say a word, then all of a sudden you're a racist. Yeah. You're a xenophobe. You're a hateful bigot and you hate people. Well, you know what I say? Well, I'm not going to say it even in Spanish because it's kind of vulgar. But that's not true. All we do is we believe that representatives should represent their constituents. Yep. And in my district now, which is Dyker Heights and Sunset Park and Red Hook, that is primarily immigrants. Whether you're first generation, or the children or grandchildren of immigrants, or members of the diaspora, Puerto Rican diaspora like me, these people simply want their concerns heard. And the more you try to silence them, the angrier they're going to get, as you can see. And you know what happens when people cannot discuss the problems and cannot air them out? The angrier we get, the worse we go to our corners, and the more chaos ensues. So that's why we need to not take this election for granted. It may be an off-off year, but we need to make an impact in the city council and take out some of those socialists away. Because my opponent, Alexa Aviles, she's not a poser. She's not a pretender. She's a true, believing, dedicated socialist. And despite her smile and her mild-mannered demeanor, she's a very firm believer, and her values do not really coincide with our American values. So, please, on November 7th, do not falter. You have to get out. And between now and then, do not be silent, because this is democracy. This is what democracy looks like. Thank you. Have a great round of applause.
applause for Paul Rodriguez here. None of this would be possible if not for the rebels on Staten Island. Out of all the boroughs, they've done it the best. The politicians have come together, Republicans and Democrats. The lawyers have gone into court and got a stay of St. John's Avila, which is in Grasmere, right on the other side of the Verrazano Bridge. And as you saw, the neighborhood came out in Midland Beach and would not be turned into speed bumps when they tried to sneak in illegal aliens under the cover of darkness into what used to be a senior citizen home for the greatest generation. Women who were married to many men who served in World War II and the Korean War and in peace time. Kicked out! Our next speaker represents the rebel faction. I'm proud.